All right, so I'm Tom Steele. Uh, currently, I'm a senior security consultant at Efficient Securities. Um, I do a lot of open source code and projects like that, and I also speak on them quite a bit. So if you guys are at uh, any of the other cons this week, I will be speaking at those on a different project. Um, and then my main novel at Efficient Security is um, pen tester. So um, mostly using the tools that we've been talking about here to break into companies uh, day in and day out. So this is a talk about complexity, um, not about storage or how to measure strength or how to, even how to measure complexity. Um, it's about how to enforce it, not how to enforce it. Um, so I'm going to be providing a tool that lets you enforce the complexity, but I'm not going to tell you how to enforce it, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to tell you um, exactly what you should let allow, what you should allow, etc. Yes. Do you recommend 50 kilovolts or 100 kilovolts? So if you if you like the tool at the end and you are looking for someone to tell you how you should use it, um, luckily there's a bunch of smart people in this room that I'm sure would uh, only charge you a small fortune to do so. So talk to them. Uh, okay, so how we how we enforce password complexity today typically uh, is filled with good intentions. And uh, good, by good intentions, I mean when Microsoft created their recommendations online about how you should enforce password complexity in your Windows domain, for instance, I'm assuming the person who wrote that and the person who designed that had very good intentions. You know, uh, we want one uppercase letter or one lowercase or three to four, right? So it's one special, one number, or one uppercase, and then you know eight key digits or eight characters. Um, but this is what good intentions get you. They get you password one, um, password with an at sign, and uh, you know, I hope not at fish at fish at one. I hope that doesn't exist, but it might. Um, and so, what these get you is not very good passwords, but they're also very, very predictable. Um, so, like I said, we break into companies on a daily basis, and oftentimes we do it through guessing passwords just like this. What we do is very simple: build a list of uh, usernames or email addresses, and um, if you have an authentication interface in the perimeter that isn't protected by some sort of two-factor authentication such as a webmail or a VPN. Um, we can just loop through each one of those usernames, and typically someone has a password like this. Um, very, very common. Um, they also work on online attacks. If you're on an internal network and you should happen to capture a hash off the, uh, off the network, typically it might be something like this. Um, you can also do guesses on the internal network against a domain controller, etc. cetera. Um, other issues that they get you. Um, this is just not really an issue with um, the good intentions behind some of the packet complexities. It's just uh, dictionary attacks typically work very, very well. Um, there's, you know, every single time that we're on a, on a test or, or trying to break into a network and we can capture a hash, typically we do dictionary attacks first and we only want really one, so um, those typically work. And even if the uh, hashing algorithm is very, very good, if it's in a dictionary, it doesn't take us long. So a good example is the NetNCL version 2 um, that you can get through things like NetBIOS and things like that. Um, it's a very slow hash to crack, um, even with some really BD systems. But you know, if that hash is in a word list that we've already obtained um, through someone else cracking it, like, stuff like that, like a LinkedIn list or the Rocky list, etc., it um, doesn't really do any good. You can still just crack it and it, it's fine. Um, so, how can we fix this? Like, what's, what's, what sort of tools can we use? What sort of methods can we use? Um, well, we can use user education for at least picking a good password. Doesn't really help against the word list because there's still some really good passwords in those word lists. Uh, well, I would say good. If, if you don't decide that they're good, that's fine. But uh, um, so we can educate users to pick good passwords. It's not really a good way of doing it, but you have to do it. Uh, you kind of hope. But the problem is there's always someone who's not paid enough to care, um, or they just don't care because they're on their way out, or they're new, and they didn't get the training. There's just basically someone that's always going to fail this. And uh, it's of the password complexity training that I've seen, um, but you should just fo only focus on why you should, or, or, or how to choose a good password, not why you should. Um, and choosing not very good advice. So that could certainly use some improvement as well. Um, and the next kind of one is just having stronger complexity requirements. And currently, you know, some examples of how you can do that are uh, like Windows Group Policy. Um, OWASP has some libraries for Java and PHP. Um, I'm sure there's some other language-specific uh, libraries. And then um, there's 
tool by Solar, I think, that is for Linux that uh, basically generates the, is a PAN module that can do some of the complex requirements. Um, does anyone see the problem with these? The one that they can immediately put out. Uh, the, the problem here is that these are very, very uh, specific to the implementation, meaning um, Windows group policy is obviously only going to work for something that connects to the domain or the Windows system. Um, the OWASP libraries are only for the two Java and PHP. Um, and uh, you know, the last one, I've seen some hacky code that can kind of tie in PHP to Linux band modules and kind of do it, but again, you're reduced to only a single language. And um, in today's environment, um, the amount of systems that we have, the amount of applications that we're using that we might use, like not something like not single sign-on that's tied to the domain, for instance, um, there's just too many places where you have a password and uh, you kind of need a universal way to do it. So that's what I created. Um, I created this, uh, this basically is a, a call of language agnostic web service. Um, basically a password complexity service um, that uses HTTP over TLS, um, which will kind of do some things to tell you um, if your password passes or fails the test that it has. Um, it's written in JavaScript on top of Node and it uses Redis as a number data store. Um, So we have time. So I'm gonna have to move over here to do the demo. And hopefully I'll just speak. Wow. It's a wireless mic I think we can use. Oh, okay. Check. After a certain length, I'm going to say it's good. Now, so I put that at 20. That's arbitrary. That's up to you to decide um, what you should do. And all of these are kind of like that. Um, we also have, uh, so, so now to the, the things that it can do, the, the checks that it can perform on a password. Um, the first one is the minimum length. That's pretty self explanatory. Um, the next one is key walk. So, what key walking is, um, and it only does it right to left. But key walking is someone choosing a password by simply walking their, their hands along the key. So it might be one, two, three, four, key W E R T, uh, or, 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 or write. So it might be T R E W, etc. Um, and so you basically really set that you want to enable, and then you set an allow amount. So once it hits uh, four characters in a row, left to right, it will um, it will fail the password. Um, the next one is your traditional complexity requirements, which is um, like, you know, you must have one lower, one upper, one digit, one special. Um, and then this one's probably the, the one of my favorites. It's actually um, can have masks. So um, typically, you know, when you're typing passwords, uh, using a mask attack is very, very good um, at, at tracking passwords because it turns out people choose very, very common masks. So um, like, well, what if we can just block those? Um, so these are three of them. Um, and it just takes an array. So you basically, can do uh, upper, lower, digit, and special. Define your mask that you don't want to allow, and, and, and uh, get will block that, or it will fail on it. Um, the next one is one word base. Um, it's actually kind of a, I'm going to say, quote from algorithm that I stole from Jeremy um, on the hashtag forums. Um, it's basically a way to take a string and, and try to see if it has a, a base word in the middle. So um, it's pretty simple, probably could do some improvement. Uh, basically, it will strip off any special special or digit characters from the um, beginning and end, and then it will convert any special or digits to a letter that they map to in kind of a lead speak method. Uh, and then it will use Redis to look up that word to see if it actually exists in the English dictionary that's in there. Um, so, and then the next one is blacklist. 
Um, so it uses, you uh, basically can feed Gabble, it's, it's Redis uh, memory cache a wordless. Um, so if you have a lot of wordless like the Rocky list, the LinkedIn list, um, et cetera, you can feed them into Gabble and then any time a password is in those wordless and you submit it to the password complexity service, it will tell you that it failed because it was in the black list. Um, So I, I didn't want to uh, sit and let this run during the demo because it does take a little while to actually feed in something like Rocky to there. Um, but uh, you know, it's very simple to run. You basically, it has a, a, a node script that runs over a word list and you get it uh, either English or blacklist. So if you want to put your English dictionary in the, in the, in the, in the Redis cache, you say English. If you want to put your words in the um, blacklist, you say blacklist. And I have provided on the repository an English dictionary. Um, and so to take every single word in Rock, you split it up and then put it in the Redis with the script, it takes about eight minutes. Um, and this can be done while the service is running. So ideally, you can have the service running on your network, and as new wordless are released, uh, or you've cracked new wordless, and uh, you know that the, you know, the, the attackers are going to be using this wordless, you can just keep feeding them into your cache. Um, now, Redis can, it's an in memory data source, so you might need a BP box. Um, with Rocky, it's, it, it runs on my laptop, so and then it gives memory. But you might need a BP server if you start feeding it, you know, uh, gigs upon gigs of wordless or something like that. Uh, okay, so uh, sorry. Okay, so first thing I'll mention, because I know people are going to be kind of freaked out, is that this web service can run with HTTP or it can run with TLS or built in. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, okay, so it does run with TLS, so it's just about as secure as using a form on your web page or something like that. Um, but uh, you can't just start with HTTP because I recommend with Node specifically. Uh, it's not the greatest, great at, at doing encryption itself. Uh, that's, better, that's better suited for a server like Nginx. So um, you ideally should run it on HTTP and then only allow uh, like a reverse proxy to talk to it and then encrypt over that. So I'm going to run it now with HTTP, but it does support it out of the box. So if you gave it a key and a cert, um, it would just run it with HTTPS. Now I need to start the server first. So now it's uh, listening here. So let's uh, feed it some passwords and see if it works. So the idea of Gabble is that um, since it's just running as a web service, um, you could have all of your web applications that you're designing tie into the same service. Um, and so if you're a security you know, engineer or something for a company, you can tell your developers, hey, uh, we we're going to use this service. You need to make this a call to this uh, JSON API and then you know, uh, use that. Don't let the developers code up their own password complexity uh, requirements, which are probably very, very simple. Um, you can also tie Linux by writing a pain module, or you could tie in your uh, Active Directory domain by writing a DLL. So if someone is looking for something to contribute, a DLL that people can put on their uh, Windows or computer Linux. Um, so yeah, it's just a post request with the password. So let's give it password one. Okay, so uh, you can see that password one was uh, in the Rocky list. Um, so maybe we give it something, maybe we some of the outside. Oh, it's in the Rocky list too. <laughs> Damn. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, so you can kind of see how this progresses. Uh, um, Node is very cool that it lets us run all those checks, uh, not in parallel, but concurrently. So there's a difference in parallel and in concurrency. Um, but uh, it, checked, it did check that very, very quickly is what that boils down to. Um, and so you can see that, uh, okay, it, it found a password that's based off of a single word. Um, let, let's, try, let's try a key walking example here. So, you know, key walking. 
what, what, what you'd expect. Um, so does anyone remember what the masks were? What I had to say. I think I had a... Yeah, six, six lower special did, right? Okay, cool. Um, so six lower special digit. Uh, six. Right? Yeah, so um, oh yeah, good keep walk, right? So uh, so yeah, if, if, you know you can see that oh uh, if, if we're denying these maps. So you know, um, you could you could put all like the common hashcat maps maybe from a, a certain word list or something or, or, or uh, get them from someone and uh, and block any type of password that can have that. So it would make an attacker's life much more difficult. Um, and then okay, so the last demo, I'm gonna give a really what I think is actually a pretty good password, but you tell me if it's gonna pass. Does anyone think that will pass? No? Nope. Why? Words. Okay, yeah. What, wait, words? Like, what do you mean words? Like, it has words, but it has two English words. It's super susceptible to the types of cracks that people in here do all the time. Adam's, uh, uh, that's that's crack work into a dictionary. Because <laughs> it, 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 basically, you take a hybrid, he's got baddest, he's got bitch, so you do a hybrid there, and then you just tack on number one. And then, I, mean, I, I watched him do this. <laughs> <laughs> So if a user came to you and said, and so, so let me ask you guys this. If you were to crack this password, would you say, oh, that user chose a really bad password, or is this a kind of okay password? I'd put it okay. But like our requirements will yeah. say, like, don't base it off a single user, don't base it, don't base it off a single word, uh, have a number, have a digit, and then, you know, so it's two words, the number and a digit, that's pretty good. The problem is, is, is that is you got the special character and then one and three. At the very beginning. Right? That's, that's why, that's what okay. makes it really bad. Okay, well this does get blocked. Um, and there's a reason, it's because this is an Iraqi list. And, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, kind of my argument, the, the point I was trying to make here is that if, if, if passwords are being leaked by other sources other than your own, and your users might be using those sources too, they're going to just use the same password, but also if they're leaked in clear, in clear text, it doesn't matter what hash they're not using a hashing algorithm. So they're going to end up in an attacker's word list. So if you can fight their word list by using the same exact words they're using, you can block seemingly okay passwords, but that would still be discovered. Um, can you give us something that passes? You know, oh, yeah. Like your own password, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why don't you give me a password, and we'll see if it's a password. Does anyone have a password? You just want to roll my face on the keyboard? No, oh, no. <laughs> so, pass. How about 10 dashes? 10 dashes? Well, 10 dashes would fail because it doesn't mean to complex your card. Can that one fail because it would get written on a sticky note? Sticky note protection is not provided. <laughs> But you know what? It's on Git, so if you want to submit a pull request for like a too complex password, I think that's um, okay. So, uh, in conclusion, this is on Git. It's open source. Like I said, uh, I don't intend to be a password complexity expert, and I probably never will be. I really like just breaking stuff. Um, and doing like things like building applications and breaking applications and things like that. I don't have really much interest in uh, in complexity or even pattern tracking all that much beyond uh, you know what it what it helps me do. Um, so if you would like to go check out the code I have and find problems with the algorithms that I've, been, I've developed or even develop more, um, you know I'm sure there's there's some great ideas in here about how we can uh, build like a strength meter and then have a, you know some sort of uh, uh, number limit or something like that. That'd be great. So it is a source, so feel free to go. Yes. Is is the innovation here the fact that you are actually um, you know using a, you know banning specific passwords as opposed to doing these entropy things or uh, is it the real reason why I thought the idea was novel right I, I thought the idea was original is that it was language agnostic. Um, meaning um, you could deploy this on your enterprise or I don't presume if someone deploys a third party service, you can trust them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Jeremy, I think, was going to do it, but I wouldn't trust him. Oh, yeah, I was going to do it. <laughs>
Yeah. Does anyone uh, deploy an actual password meter that's based on you know, blacklisting? Uh, I, I know. So I know that there, I know there's some. Paper, oh. I know there's some paper ones that exist that have been. So is that like is that part of like Windows specific? So I know there's some Windows specific ones that will let you define blacklist. I don't think you can. Def I don't think you'll define them as large as this, but. I think it's like a few words, so maybe your company and things like that. There are some third party services that will let you do it with the paper service. Well, well Perry talk that pointed out that Twitter, I think, has seven words that they blacklist. I think it's a thousand word list, right? It's, 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 I, I think it's, so yeah, if you actually look at the source code for Twitter, I think that I think that uh, is entirely in memory on the client. Yep. So um, certainly not the original idea of banning a blacklist, but a blacklist this large, I would I haven't seen anywhere else. And like I said, being language agnostic to me is really important in that um, you can. You don't have to depend on, a, on on every single developer, every single system, or every single admin doing their own password complexity. You can just say, "Hey, you need to use this or this." Okay. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with uh, ZXCVBN project? No. Did I steal your idea? Did you? Uh, no, you did not steal it. I think you guys can get things together really nicely. Okay. That's so, that's that's all from the from the Dropbox, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, blacklists, um, while anything coming out in 1Password 4 is beta tentative, we don't know, but the, uh, the, the built-in password strength meter in that uh, uses a 10,000. Um, okay, cool. Yes. So is the idea that enterprises would run this in-house and so therefore... Yep, yeah, the idea is that uh, if you, even if you had um, I mean, enterprises or people who are taking in users' passwords and, and want to do a very good job of complex requirements. Uh, certainly, I think I think there's some difficulties there. Like, if you're Twitter and you start de deploying this, people are going to be upset because they're not going to be able to use all their favorite passwords. So, there's some there's some explanation to go on. You know, say, hey, we're doing this, and why we're doing it. Yes. Uh, what I mean, if someone was to just grab this and turn on all the options. What is the what percentage of the password space becomes banned? Sorry, I'll tell you zero percent. I mean, it's password space is banned, right? Well, okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Guys, this is turning into a discussion, so uh, I think we should uh, break it off. That I'm going to do uh, a seven minutes break while we just arrange a few things here, and next speaker up again is Otto Hashtag again. So thank you, John.